Thanks everyone for coming. My name is Chris Kennedy. I'm the programmer for the year-round section of uh, Wavelengths here at TIFF Bell Lightbox. And on behalf of uh, TIFF Bell Lightbox, I would like to uh, acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work with it in that community. And on behalf of TIFF, we'd like to thank our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris and Visa, and TIFF Cinematheque's public supporters, the Ontario Media Development Corporation, and the Canadian Council for, Canada Council for the Arts. And as a charitable organization, we would also like to thank our donors and members for making TIFF's year-round programming, educational and community outreach initiatives possible. Thanks to Classic FM Radio and Zoomer Radio, our program sponsors as well. And also for tonight, I'd like to thank uh, Vertical Features. This is actually a co-presentation with them. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, they are showing um, uh, Kevin Everson's uh, Tonsler Park, a really uh, amazing film that he made in 2016 during the uh, during election day for the general election uh, in um, in the U U.S. Uh, uh, shooting basically a um, uh, filming what goes on at a polling station in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia. So uh, that is at Jackman Hall, the uh, Art Gallery of Ontario, at uh, seven o'clock. Doors at six thirty. So. Uh, you should uh, definitely uh, make a point of going to that as well. The conversation from tonight will be will continue. And actually, I'm not going to do too much of an introduction because just found out there's actually uh, another filmmaker here for, uh, uh, as well, and also um, uh, a, the, a, a collaborator shooter for Kevin. So there's four guests. So rather, rather than do four long int intros, I'm going to just say that we're really lucky to have uh, Michael Ariel Watson, whose uh, film is uh, precedes uh, the Black Fire UVA films that we will see tonight. Uh, we also have Kevin Jerome Everson and Claud uh, Claudrina Harold, uh, the filmmakers of the Blackfire USA series, and also Cal Khalil, and I didn't get the last name. Uh, who ha Kevin's always been talking about my friend Khalil, and he's never said his last name <laughs> and af after a decade of hearing. But uh, Khalil is also, Kevin says, let's bring him up as well. So uh, if the four of you can join me uh, to, uh, at the very beginning to, to give a little introduction, let people know who you are, and, we, and then we can uh, see. So come on up. And to give a little bit of context as they come up, Blackfire U USA's uh, UVA, Blackfire UVA, has uh, yeah, that's, that's the next round. <laughs> Avengers Endgame Blackfire USA. <laughs> Um, has been a project you, uh, Claudrina and Kevin have been working on for about a decade, almost a decade now. Um, uh, com coming out of your own class, this amazing class of uh, historical research about uh, uh, African Americans on the UVA cam ca campus. And Micah is one of your students, uh, and who's now an MFA at NYU, is that right? Yes. Um, and. Uh, and sh we're, we're, we were told we've got to show this film. I saw that film, and we, we were showing that film first to kind of perceive the whole thing. So without further ado, why don't you guys say a few, a few things? Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Micah Ariel Watson. Uh, I go to NYU originally from Wichita, Kansas. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kansas. Um, let's see what else to share. Um, this film was my undergraduate thesis. Um, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, so Emmett Till's story was always something that was near and dear to my heart and um, something that I was trying to unpack as I dealt with um, changes in the way that I viewed my faith and my blackness. So yeah, I'm super excited for you guys to see it. And uh, Black Fire Films, uh, well, Claudia, you know, hit that. <laughs> basically, well, basically, uh, the films are about the uh, um, stories from stories, pictures, audio tapes of the history of African Americans at the University of Virginia, and we've been making them since 2001, two? 2013. 13, 12. 12, yeah. And, uh, and Cleo Pettisai, um, he lives up in Cleveland, and a longtime friend of mine, almost like a family member. Well, we're all family members now. And he um, and he's a, a professional assistant director, so he comes down and runs the crew, um, which are the students stuff like that. So, so and he teaches them how to be professionals all on the film set. So our films are are artistic, but also like part of our pedagogical um, like the mission at the University of Virginia. So, yeah. so uh, 
Uh, yeah, I guess we can wrap a taste when we when, when we're done. Yeah. I guess. Anything else, Claudia? Anything? I think that's it. So <laughs> that's it. I think you'll see a little bit of the history of Black Studies at UVA. You'll see a little bit of um, the history of um, Vietnam War protest at UVA. You'll see the history of uh, sports at UVA. The first. African Americans to integrate the uh, athletic uh, department. UVA was the last school uh, in the ACC to integrate. You'll see a little bit of music uh, in the history of black culture. Sly Stone came to the University of Virginia in 1973. Uh, the university didn't bother to get anyone to pick him up. So a group of black students picked him up from the airport. Yes, yeah, Sly Stone. Um, <laughs> and needless to say, he was very angry at the circumstances. And so we did this five-minute film based on that exchange. And um, other music in, in terms of African-American history and, and dance and, and gospel. And so we're looking forward to this. And I'm just really happy to be here and happy to share this stage with uh, Kevin Everson and uh, Khalil Pedazai and also uh, Michael Watson. And it's a sneak, peek of a, a sneak peek of another film as well that's not listed in the program that we got last night. So thank you for the tech. <laughs> thank you to the tech department for for working on holiday to, to make this possible. So we'll be back for a Q&A afterwards. Awesome. We'll open up to some questions, but I'll, I'll start with a few. Um, Claudrina, did you want to talk a little bit about um, Black Fire and, and kind of the, the way history seems to be both a pedagogy and an empowerment, I think. Uh, yeah, so I guess around, I got to UVA in 2004 and I teach um, Intro to African American Studies and I teach a course called Black Power. And um, quite simply, I got tired of um, all my students in Black Power writing on Malcolm X or Tupac Shakur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the connections between my, you know black power and thug power. And, um, and so I began to incorporate more of the local history mm -hmm. into the course, and I noticed that students got a charge out of when they heard that, say, Stokely Carmichael came to UVA or the story of black studies at UVA. So by the time I got to 2011, 2012, I had enough material that I thought, you know, we could do a documentary on the history of black student activism at UVA. And so uh, we did this documentary, Sugar-Coated Arsenic, which centered on the life of um, the great uh, late Vivian Gordon, who was um, first African-American woman to be the director of black studies at UVA. And um, when we finished the film, I had all of this archival material from just pictures and videos. And so I started actually teaching a course called Black Fire which is the history of African-Americans at the university. And so, um, for example, the semester after August 11th and August 12th, I had about 256 students in the class. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the film, there's, always the cl there's also the class. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the students in the class also participated in the film. So like, for example, Fastest Man in the State, most of those students who p were in that film were actually in the class. So we began that film, we shot at 5 a.m at a local grocery store and <laughs> Whole Foods, <laughs> or Whole Paycheck, that's what we call it. <laughs> uh, so 5 so five a.m. and then 9, so we finished the class, I mean the, the shoot, and both of us went and taught, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's kind of, you know, also just our grind. Um, it's not uncommon for us to have a shoot and then teach a class the same day. Well, do you want to talk a little bit more about the collaborative process, both amongst you, but also with your students a little bit more, and how they kind of become a participant in, in these films? And, and, and Yeah. I think when we did Show Code of Arson, it was the first one. You had a class in the comm school building. What was that class called? What was that? Heard it on the radio. And, and so it was the same time as my advanced film class, so we all used to just go there and just hang out. And then we would show, because um, Show Code of Arson was based on... Uh, Horace Orve's uh, Baldwin's nigger, mm -hmm. and Baldwin giving a speech and stuff. And then so we wanted a uh, shot of like, a, like an actress, Aaron, Aaron Stewart, who was in a, none of my films called Cinnamon, about the drag racing, mm -hmm. about a black drag racing family. And so we wanted it. So that was so we showed that in that class and, and then photographs. And, and so we just kind of kind of crewed up there. And then I brought in and then I knew like I just make films by myself. I mean, I mean, uh, Chris Kennedy did sound for one of my films in the junkyard in north of Ontario. <laughs> where was that city? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and so anyway, so but then so I know uh, my man Khalil Pettiside from Cleveland, who I know known since 1990, because we used to live in the same building together and stuff. And he was a professional assistant director, so I said, well, why don't we just bring him in to kind of organize the students and the crew and do a professional call sheet, and then so we can kind of organize the thing. Because I'm like all over the place. Like I just want to shoot and don't care about anything. So Khalil's really good at just getting the kids together and stuff. And then I make him do a like demo on lighting. Um, I make him kind of break down other films that he worked on and other films and how they would be um, like with directed and put together. So it became this kind of big kind of pedagogical for like African American studies and also my art class in the film with department too as well. So yeah. So was that, that, was, that was that the question? <laughs> I'm just like talking. <laughs> I mean, Khalil, what, what's it like working with the students? Then I mean, it's yeah. Uh, it's a really amazing experience, and um, it's sort of. Um, a really awkward moment for me because um, even though I've worked on all the films, I never really had a full grasp of everything, how they fit all together until tonight because I'd only seen some of them only on Vimeo. So to actually sit in a theater, it sort of gave me, a, um, it was sort of an emotional experience tonight. And then especially to see your work, Micah, because I've known you for quite some time now and then to see that this body of work that was started, and now you're adding to it, and it's 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 really great. So it's it's been a great experience. Um, the uh, probably the most exciting aspect, though, for me, um, coming down, um, you would think is um, actually the technical stuff, but it's really watching the creative process and seeing how they go about solving um, the issues of every production. And I just want to put the challenge to Kevin and Claudrina that you guys have to actually do something even more difficult next time and more amazing than um, than um, anything else that we've seen so far. So, yeah. Well, Micah, that's a good um, segue for you. I mean, you, you've had a little bit of time to s reflect on, you know, being a student in this milieu and, and making it work since then. And uh, did you want to talk a little bit about... Uh, where you're at or, or where you came from or in regards to how, how Black Fire kind of lit, lit the fire? Sure. Um, so I believe it was my, my first year of undergrad. I was taking, what, African American Studies 1020. Everybody was taking 1020. Um, but I was taking African American Studies 1020 with Claudrina. And Kevin came in to talk. And I was like, yo, like, who is this? Like, <laughs> very, uh, his class is kind of low key, hard to get into. Um, he has this this list of uh, students he, like, writes down, like, doesn't even mess with the, the electronic system. So I uh, asked Claudrina to, like, introduce me and help me to get into the class and that's eventually how I became a part of the gutter um, and became involved um, with you know helping a little bit with, with some of these films and um, sort of growing as an artist and watching these uh, it feels so full circle I'm a little emotional too because I, I only graduated a year ago and I'm thinking about I'm seeing my friends up here and thinking about the moments that I spent learning and like not knowing what I was doing at all and then to um, see that I, I get to be here um, and really show my work and so yeah, it, it, it feels really great. I think I've grown a lot as an artist in the last year um, as an MFA. I'm studying dramatic writing, so that's playwriting, screenwriting, and television, um, and, and working on a web series, but really seeing um, how my faith journey, um, the uh, a shift in my faith journey began with this film, 40th and State, and I'm really seeing the ways that my art is growing out of that as far as like scripts go and, and shorts that I'm making and uh, web series and stuff that I'm working on too. So it feels very amazing and full circle to be back with Kevin and Claudrina and Khalil. So. What is your web series? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Black Enough. Um, actually, as soon as I <laughs> leave Toronto, I'm going to go, go shoot that in Charlottesville. It comes out in fall 2019. Um, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Black Enough underscore underscore, or check out our website, black-enough.com. <laughs> Are there other questions from the audience? Let's open it up down here. Shoot on film seems like you you teach film, Kevin. But but you know it'd be easier to shoot it on digital. But it adds so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. but could you talk about that? There's yeah. just so it, it seems central to the feel and the going back in time, the art direction on so many levels. It just adds a lot. Well, the first one, Chick Code Arsenic, that was um, 
we actually used um, 80 ASA reversal film stock, the last of its kind ever. I think I have one roll in my refrigerator, but uh, so because we wanted kind of no grain and stuff like that, because that was a kind of like the ASA speeds or the ISO, or the ISO speed that was shot in the seventies. So we just used that, and then so we just like and Claudia loves the stuff. I love the stuff, and so we just shoot film. Um, yeah, we just shoot it on film. Like Black Bus Stop was shot, half of it was shot with the the Ursa. We bought that for uh, the Black Magic Ursa. But we used um, um, Andrew Lou Lenz. I'm nerd now. We used Andrew Lou Lenz's on it, but but because uh, that was uh, we shot that at night because uh, I wanted it to be or we wanted it to be at night, I think, so to speak. And um, but I think yeah, I think the kind of archival stuff, you know, we wanted to the, the, what to kind of be on film, so it has that kind of texture. So there's you know so uh, yeah, and for me, I don't know what would be easier if <laughs> it was on HD because we could somehow another like the film, especially the black and white, that we can hide periods. Um, sure, clearly, like arsenic, we had to like hide the twenty, the twenty first century. So the way we frame things up and use the kind of the film stocks that work and stuff um, for that one. What's the other black and white? Um, however, we um, how can we ever be late? That was shot at an airport, so we had to hide the airport and in planes and you know, and then that was a period piece too as well. And so, you no, know, we have a like a theater department where we get the costumes and get the students fitted and stuff like that. But. But yeah, but the film stock's important. I don't know how much easier it would be with on HD if it was on. Would it be you know, yeah. YouTube? Yeah. Um, in fact, we always have that that conversation, and I've I've actually always been the person that's been pushing to just let's shoot this on HD. Let's let's get a higher end camera in and let's do it that way because that's generally the way that I work in film production and crews that I work with. Usually, the emphasis is on time and money you know very quick like what can we do to expedite our day and so tonight I have to say that you know I think you guys have consistently made the right choice of shooting on film <laughs> you know it looks amazing and it holds up in a completely different way um, even though Black Bus Stop was beautiful you know I still support the choice for film and um, at the uh, <laughs> So that's, I mean, I said it one time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so um, I think as well that there was something that, especially with um, uh, sugar-coated arsenic, that completely transformed it from what it was that was in front of us. Um, you know, when you add in the art direction, when you add in the angles and what we captured in terms of architecture and things like that, that really just sold it because I know those people sitting in that scene, in those scenes. And like literally I was lost in looking at them. And I felt as though that I was actually looking at other people that I knew from the 70s as like a young person myself, just looking at older people. So it was, it was absolutely beautiful, so yeah. Other questions? Uh, there's a question back there. Uh, and th there's a mic coming for you. So uh, I was interested in how um, most of them seem to take an archival text and use that and then pair it with some sort of um, exploration of performance or gesture. A lot of them are very focused on gesture, which I thought was wonderful. Um, the one that stands out to me is the, the 70 kilograms, the, the wrestlers. And I'm kind of curious about that because there's no, I mean, it says here that they, they're shown taking instructions. And so I'm curious about the decision to not include any spoken or um, text per se. I know that it's it's it becomes about the this this relationship between them and the gestures and the performance of the wrestling. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that was curious. supposed to be part of um, uh, part of um, fastest man. But again, we're trying to make a like a kind of some nah, somewhat of a period piece. So we like cast by afros. You know, and <laughs> those kids were, they're lovely kids, and they're great, they were great students, good kids, and, and, but they had tattoos and dreadlocks, so we just ended up shooting, I think I might have just got that lens or something, we are just like practicing with it, so we ended up just shooting them like wrestling, so to speak, there, but in the UVA outfit, but like that's part of Black Fire, because it's just part of Black Fire, uh -huh. but you know, but it doesn't, has, yeah. and then also there was a 10 minute take of the foosball scene too that is another film as well so okay. to speak. yeah 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 these moments in between in a way yeah, that yeah, this yeah. would capture something and I, it, they stand out to me because of that yeah 
Oh, that was interesting. Yeah, and so that, that just leads to my other quick question. Um, because there's six films, mm -hmm. and obviously this spans a lot of years, so how, just how you were thinking about showing these six for this program tonight? Uh, we can I, can yeah. I ask you, I'm gonna yeah. answer the first question though. Yeah. I think these films are a celebration of form. Yeah. And so if you've ever, I play basketball, and I think track is the most, I don't want to say most difficult sport, but it's always been amazing to me that someone would run for fun. <laughs> um, but like wrestling like requires a sort of supreme intelligence. And so I think like there are things that you can see in terms of that brilliance and that intelligence rendered uh, visually where you don't need text. Uh, you don't need necessarily like spoken word. And I think... Um, you see that in the dancing. You see that in the you know the Greek steps and the form. So I hope that collectively, um, you know, even when Vivian Gordon says everybody has a sound current, you know. So I think you see this celebration of form in all of the films. You know, whether it be you know a master teacher, because in some ways, um, you know, I've always wanted to do a, do a series of films on like master teachers, people who can just come in a lecture and just hold, you know, hold the class spellbound. So, you know, whether it's sports, whether it's wrestling, whether it's dance, whether it's singing, whether it's the gospel choir, you know, the whole form of getting on the bus, you know, it's all about form and gesture. So it's also, I think, a celebration of form. It was just about how you chose the six. I, it's a, probably a too long a question. But <laughs> the only ones we did. But <laughs> I like that they went in order because I was thinking I was thinking that there'd be like oh should ours and come out, but I kind of like they're well, they're not in order. But those are the the ones that we did, and then one of them is just would be what repetitive if we showed the other one, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we just and I remember Chris he asked me a while ago about showing them, and I said wait till we get about an hour worth of them, you know. So and we just kind of just keep making them, whatever. Yeah. Can't remember. What do you, what do you say? <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. It's just like I don't know. We go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go back. Um, listen, I, I just I, I was very glad to, to see these on the big screen, and I just wanted to ask you um, what kind of dialogue, if any, there is uh, between what you're doing with Black Fire and the gallery work that we're seeing being done by black artists on the one hand, mm. and then on mm. the other hand, the work that's happening in black popular visual culture, people like you know Kanye and Beyonce and others using similar kinds of visual yeah. language. And is this a kind of a, an overall dialogue, or are you, are, you, um, are you a part of that, or are you completely aside from it, would you say? Well, I think we're... We're, we're, we're kind of that's a good question I think we are kind of a part of it I mean we had Khalil Joseph and Atha Jaffa and same were you there Micah when they were there, I was there for Arthur, yeah. okay yeah 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 and then um cause I keep forgetting what years <laughs> we were in school or whatever like so they were um yeah so they were there and I've known them for years um and then I mean we're aware of what's going on because we kind of talk about it all the time and you know, and Black Star is a great film festival to be part of in uh, Philadelphia. With my R is doing great stuff there, and um, so we, so we're in. So I think our films are in conversation with those films, and I think the sixteen millimeter thing. I, I see, like, I don't know. I'm just, just talking, but you know, the whole idea of like, um, for me, being like, I come from like painting and sculpture and, and you know photography and stuff. So I, so I, so I, I'm, I'm always looking at things two dimensionally. And but now you know three dimensionally with the sculptural work too as well. But but I like a surface to the stuff. And then so the whole idea of film and different kind of mediums and different kind of lens stocks. These are my paint brushes and my oils and my acrylics. So I like to kind of use these things to kind of you know, and then and, and then for me it's more about language of what these things say uh, so, so to speak. And I think um, and then my own work too as well is different from the Black Fire because the Black fire stuff and i realized this about a couple of years ago that the black fire stuff the way we cut it it needs an audience you know it needs like there's an invitation to to the gestures and the text and the, and the people but my own work it doesn't need an audience it's like completely abstract painting it exists on its own it's self-referential all that kind of shit 
So I'm into that, so to speak, with my own stuff. And so I know these things are in conversation with uh, the other kind of films. And then, and um, we haven't. And I remember because um, when we shot the the, the foosball f scene is a t ten minute long take. And I thought about that. Just when I'm looking through the viewfinder. I thought about that for a gallery. Just kind of sit there and watching that. But then, but these films are made for the kind of the passive audience. The, um, the, what, what, the, the kind of audience. But maybe at some point we may do something like I don't know. But you know, because I remember we were talking about we. Were, some student came in the other day talking. Well, you know what Tierra was asking us about the uh, was she? Maybe she came in there. I was doing Apple sculpture. Music. Like I've been making these sculptures, and people come in and just talk to me about. Yeah, that for futurism. So, so we're in conversation with all that, kind of, you know. So I think it's just an ongoing. Which for me is exciting now because a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff, and and even Micah's film is in conversation with all that too as well. But uh, I don't know. You know, so I'm I'm friends with I'm really good friends with Greg Tate, and yeah, so yeah. I met Arthur through, through Greg. Greg. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because uh, Sugar Coated Arsenic was in um, the New York Film Festival with um, Dreams of Colder Than Death. And um, I think that's a black studies film. You know, it's hard to imagine that film without Hortense Spillers and Saidia Hartman and, and, and all of these yeah. folks and Fred Moat. And, yeah. and um, you know, it, it, when watching that made me think about, like, going back to the 90s. And I remember the second class that I had at Temple as an undergraduate, somebody showed Sankofa. And... Yeah. I'm I'm writing something on Julie Dash now, and it's it's, it's sort of interesting um, to think about because that film came out in '91, and I was a starting undergraduate in '94. But that film's presence was like it was still in the air yeah. when I when I got the co you know the college. So you know I don't have an art background per se. I come out of Black Studies, but you could just Daughters of the Dust, you could just feel it. I mean, it was still there and kind of present. Um, in the early 90s. And so I, you know, I think about Colleen Smith and I think about the ways in which she's incorporating um, the black feminist text and stuff like Sojourner, but also the ways in which she's incorporating Alice Coltrane in her work. And so I think, um, I think there's a lot of interesting things going on and a lot of us are trying to figure out, you know, that come from different traditions. I think we're trying to, you know, push something and think about what are the connections. And so for me, with Black Fire, and we were talking about this earlier, uh, the physicality of making the first film, I, I was not prepared for it at all. And so now, eight films later, it's like, wow. Um, but I come from, you know, one of, my stu one of my teachers always used to say, train your replacement. So for me, it was, you know, so seeing Micah stuff, it's just like, it's always this idea that, okay, Micah, I have this idea, you go with that. You know, you, you know, or you have an idea, how can I support it institutionally as a professor, you know? So for me, it's like being more part of this community than per se, you know, being an artist. Mm -hmm. And then also formally, I mean, me and Khalil, we have these conversations all the time about. And I remember didn't have this long talk with like Khalil Joseph and all, the, and all the, just when they came to Charlottesville, we had them there for like a couple, like three or four days. And I remember, um, like I used to like, man, I'm nerd out on techno, but I used to nerd out on, you know, I used to like 10 millimeter lenses. I like the people to perform in front of me. And then I remember all the jobs that he likes for people not to know they're being performed. So the whole idea of what kind of lenses and stuff. And then so he was, and people were challenging me, and why don't you just use telephoto lenses and put the damn thing on the tripod? Like, little, like, cusses me out because I never use it. You use, you use the tripod and you'd be shocked. But then, you know, so the whole idea of that, you know, even formally, like we're talking about how to render what is so supposed to be like blackness, so to speak, and in, that, in, the, in, in multiple ways of trying to render, you know, uh, either know what's going on in the present, uh, future, and the past, so to speak, yeah. Yeah, because you're right in the middle of it. You're in school. <laughs> yeah, I, I am very much in school. I turned in my last assignment this morning. <laughs> um, but to t touch on your question, I, I remember the first time I saw Lemonade was in Kevin's class. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, ago, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that was the first of like you know 17 times that I watched it, and. <laughs> For me, I can't dismiss what's happening with like I can't divorce what's happening with like the visual album movement and the way that music um, and film are sort of intertwining in this very public space from the 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 classes and the the education that I received at, at UVA um, from Kevin and Claudrina. So in in my own work, I tried to 
create this blend between the historical and the contemporary, and that's often through music. I think about uh, albums like Solange's A Seat at the Table and The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill. And so kind of in this visual album area, all of my work seems to like touch on that, seems to be a part of that, or at least I, it, it tries to be. Um, I'm a playwright too, so e even my plays sort of um, become this, this musical thing with um, interludes, um, and that sort of tried to give space for time and gesture on the stage. Um, so yeah, I think I, I see my work very much as a part um, of, of what's happening in popular culture. One final question. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Micah. Um, I was really moved by your film, and uh, particularly the ending of the film. I was not expecting um, I was not expecting that movement and that, that you know that 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 shot of the of the feet moving right after uh, those words were spoke. So I was wondering if maybe you could shed light on why you chose to to use that kind of gesture. Sure. Um, so I come from a very deep Pentecostal uh, black church tradition um, and something in the Pentecostal church that happens is shouting. Um, and I, I'm trying to figure out how to verbally articulate that, which is maybe why I made it into a film. But it's this dance form um, that's spontaneous and inspired um, by by moves of God. I'm not going to go into like theology and, and whatnot. <laughs> but there's there's something like, you know, beautiful and artistic and skillful about that. But also there's like a, a pounding uh, of your feet on the ground. That's also violent at the same time. And that's something that I wanted to capture in terms of exploring Emmett Till's funeral. It's it's this um, very visceral thing, you know, where coming people are coming together, it's community, you know, we're sharing meals, we're hugging, all those things. But as a result of a very, very violent act um, that was enacted upon a child. Um, so yeah, that's very much like what the the shouting moment was for me. And also pairing that with the the hip hop soundtrack in making this film, I, I couldn't separate black boyhood death today from the Emmett Till tragedy. And so that seemed like the most natural way for me to, to, to bridge the two without being, I, I hope it wasn't heavy handed, but that seemed the, the, the best way for me to bridge that without being heavy handed. So that's sort of what that moment was for me. Well, that's all the time we have. Um, thanks so much. I'm thanks so, so glad for everyone to thanks come. Thanks everybody. Thanks Chris. Yeah, man, right yeah. on. And, uh, <laughs>